Vion is a humanoid robot which is approximately of the size of an eight-year-old child and is specially built for the language experiments within the ALIA project. ALIAR is an acronym and stands for Artificial Language Evolution on Autonomous Robots. So it's about the evolution or how does a language emerge. And therefore actually you need an environment and you need robots which can sense their environment. You need some objects within the environment and then the body and uh, the processing power to detect what's all around the robots and then they can start to communicate. Actually, we are not aware of how complex normal behavior is to us, for example, to, to walk, to sit, to stand still. And if you try to put this onto a robot, you realize uh, that you need a very tight system of sensory motor loop, which uh, actually means having a lot of proprioceptive sensors. And this is what Muon is built around. So there's a huge amount of those sensors and we have distributed processing powers, so the body parts are fully autonomous. And uh, we can study in isolation sensory motor loops with single legs or arms, and then later put this together for more complex behavior. So this is very important for the whole system, uh, since um, you can detach the body parts and reattach them. And if something breaks, um, you can still go on studying the behavior of it. For Muon, we had a very tight time schedule. Actually, it has been one and a half year from sketch to the full robot. And uh, this included test scenarios, this included soldering, and uh, so electronics and programming firmware, doing some motions with the robot, testing and all that. There was a Thorsten Siedl, who was a constructor of the whole robot. And despite him, the team of around 10 students uh, were really busy for this one and a half year. We immediately liked the idea to have an outer hull for the robot. Not only because it's good for the appearance, but also it's good for handling. And also it eases uh, the communication between the robot and a human partner, which is actually part of the ALIA project as well. And for that, it's easier to communicate with something that appears uh, as an eight-year-old child and not as a coffee machine or something technical, uh, which makes a special arousal uh, when you sit in front of it. For us, um, the appearance of a product, and that's um, true for the robot as well, is um, not only technically interesting and important, but also from a symbolical emotional side. So um, everybody who sees this robot gets a certain emotion, whether he wants or he does not want. And that was a typical task that we as a designer have to, to match very often, that um, we're not only defining material and uh, designing um, physical edges, but also we are creating an appearance of a product and um, we, that's what we defined already during the character workshop. In addition to that, we, um, we defined uh, the proportion of the robot. So, for example, we had to work on the, on the shoulder proportion or on the angle uh, from shoulder to neck, because with this already you define a lot of the, of the, the appearance of this robot. The researchers often have to adapt certain things or change accumulators uh, on the leg or on an arm. So there was one specification that's very easy to, to demount the shells that we design. But that was only one specification. Another one was, and that was the general idea behind uh, designing shells for a robot, that these shells need to protect the robot. And the shells, as the exoskelet, work against the torsion which exists during all the movements. And on the other hand, we want to work with a material which has a aesthetical quality. That's when we came together with Bayer and when we defined these needs for our material, uh, we started to work in yeah, plenty of tests finding the right way for this. We started first in the area of polyurethane. We tried to build up these shells with multi-tech. The polyurethane mixture with glass fibers, what can be sprayed. So we tried first to spray the molds uh, with multi-tech. 
But at the end, we recognized that to build up the whole numbers of shells for, for the muon robot would be very inefficient. So we switched to polycarbonate. To reach a very robust shell in this case means that we have to reinforce the polycarbonate with glass fibers. This is the point what the scientists would like to have. The other point is that the designers would like to have a very high valuable exoskeleton. To do that, we need a second layer to cover the reinforced polycarbonate. We did this with a transparent macrolone layer and the combination out of this um, get those specifications. I think it's a very nice um, uh, concept having a hull which has some function for the stability of the robot, at the same time for the appearance when you deal with the robot and uh, uh, does not uh, hinder the robot uh, during the motion or during uh, doing interaction with the environment and with the objects. Of course, for us it's interesting how to um, to build up such a shell with our material. And of course, um, it was interesting to see what is possible. As we saw that uh, the, the whole working group from Manfred Hild is working with um, 3D printing and CNC milling, so all very new techniques, we saw that it's very interesting for us to see what is possible and if they can reach this very ambitious schedule at the end. We were finally very happy that uh, we have this triangle of three different uh, competencies within this project. Uh, the Humboldt Universität Berlin with their uh, informatic and physical and engineering uh, competence and of course biomaterial science bringing in all the experience and knowledge and um, know-how uh, according to the material side. We have been very busy for one and a half year now uh, with producing muon, uh, but if we look forward, I think uh, the most interesting part or the as interesting part is just before us because we now start, we just start to do behaviors and games with robots and study their motions and sensory motor loops, so we are all looking forward in what will be within the next year.